Well, one of the reasons why the Taliban rose in Afghanistan in the absence of a stable government was because they provided social services to people. And also, um, that's similar in Pakistan, there, where Islamist groups are providing things like education and health care that the government doesn't provide in the tribal areas or the government doesn't provide well in the tribal areas. How does that play into the, this is for anyone, how does that play into the uh, political and military environment? Well, well, actually, um, the Taliban really did not provide uh, social services. In fact, they allowed massive deterioration of both the civil service and any sort of social networks, uh, socioeconomic network that existed. But what they did and what was critical, they provided security. Mm -hmm. Now, that might sound uh, a weird statement to make because obviously they were extraordinarily brutal and they imposed a great deal of brutality on women, on minorities, and even on Pashtun males. But nonetheless, within this constraint of brutality, they provided predictable brutality and security from warlords, from the um, mass uh, unpredictability and crime of uh, the 1990s. So when you talk with Afghans, inevitably, they, and you ask them about the Taliban era, inevitably they, they tell you, yeah. during the Taliban, things were bad. However, you could go from Kandahar to Turinkad or Kandahar to Kabul with uh, 5 million rupees, and at the time it was Pakistani rupees, not Afghanis, and you would not be robbed. Now we go around the corner and uh, we are likely going to be uh, robbed by someone or we will have to pay a lot of the money that we have, which often is very little, to uh, the uh, Afghan police or to many of the militias that are emerging. Um, so, uh, the, you know, although there was a great deal of, of brutality and insecurity generated by the Taliban. There was also a great deal of security and predictability. And there was, sort of, there was order, brutal order, but order that existed. And for many Afghans, uh, this order is gone. Yes, you have far more access to uh, schools for children who didn't have schools. You have better access to health care. Uh, people who, uh, many of the expatriates, uh, in Kabul uh, are living in far better conditions. Those that were well positioned could access unimaginable rents and become really rich. But many ordinary Afghans f uh, find themselves in an environment where they are extremely economically vulnerable and profoundly vulnerable security-wise. And one last comment I would make is that a lot of the initial Obama strategy, uh, General McChrystal's strategy, was about population-centric uh, insurgency, not about uh, defeating, crushing, decapitating the insurgents, or not, not solely, but with the purpose of increasing the physical security of uh, the Afghan population. And that arguably has been achieved in some parts of Kandahar and in some parts of Helmand. But it has not been achieved um, on a sort of wider scale. And those parts where Gamzer, um, uh, Musakala, even uh, places like, uh, sort of certainly Lashkarga, Musakala, less so, where people feel that there is a little bit more personal security freedom. Uh, we don't know how robust that is and whether it can hold. We don't know if the Taliban is truly crushed and whether it will be defeated. And we don't know whether other actors, including the militias that are emerging, the power brokers that are resurrecting uh, their, their men in arm, will uh, uh, generate again the insecurity that will bring us into the early 1990s.